We live in an age that's quite different morally than the one that I was raised in. That doesn't make my age right necessarily and today's age wrong, nor does it make today's age right and my age wrong in these matters. However, I am convinced the Bible determines what's right and wrong. <laughs> However, I am convinced that we are seeing the results of casting God out of our nation. And we're living in an age where the liberal politicians and others who are like-minded, those who are in authority, are pushing an ungodly social experiment that involves supporting and promoting sexual immorality upon our nation through laws, lawsuits, and even forcing it upon our children who are attending our public schools. These people are not satisfied with the promotion of the most disgusting immorality. They not only mock and persecute those who stand for God's word, but to them, though for us, to oppose homosexuality is to be mocked, to be called names, to be threatened, and even taken to court. Our children and our grandchildren will be raised in an age that for the most part approves of such behavior. Not an age in which I was raised, not an age which most of you were raised, where that was not approved of, and we understand that. But what chance will they have whenever this is all around them and the approval of it is all around them? It was June the 26th, 2015, that same-sex marriage in the United States was made law. Tomorrow will be the anniversary date of that infamous ruling. It was April the 27th, 2015, that an Orange County judge fined bakers $135,000 for refusing to bake a gay wedding cake for two women who requested a cake for their homosexual marriage ceremony on January the 17th, 2013. The case has advanced to the point to where it's to appear before the Supreme Court. But I can find that it has been delayed and delayed and delayed and has still not been heard before the Supreme Court. And so I ask, will it be the case that someday not only must homosexuality be tolerated in our society, but also supported even by those who oppose it as immoral and sinful. And so it's for this reason we have a study from God's Word dealing with this topic. I would like to read this, and I didn't bring my glasses. I might not be able to. A woman writes to dear Abby. They put Abby back on the comics page and since it's so handy when I read the comics, I can read Dear Abby at the same time. Got to get to the important stuff, the comics, you know. And so, Dear Abby, I have a longtime friend I see almost every day. She's an awesome friend. Her children are adults. One of them is gay. The other is a transgender male. I respect her for supporting her children learning everything there is to know about the LGBT community and seeking social change on their behalf. The conflict lies in the fact that my religious beliefs and personal feelings are at odds with the notion of gender, gender fluidity. I think the concept is nuts. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> I have compassion, however, for people who suffer with their identity in any form. And that's what it is. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you are. I also believe in equal rights. Now, here's the thing. I want you to listen to her response, at least a part of it. Abby replies, Would you feel the same way about a friend who is divorced? Now, a little bit different thing. If your religion didn't sanction it, 
I'll bet you wouldn't. The same is true for this longtime friend. Gender fluidity may be a new concept for you, but it's very real. If you feel like a hypocrite taking indignation during some of these conversations, why not use them as an opportunity to be educated? Listen, ask questions, say, I don't know enough about this, but because I love you, I need to learn more about it. Well, I can't hardly read any more. There's more that she wrote, but that's plenty. The thing is, is acceptance of this is being pushed in newspapers, magazines, books, TV shows, movies, wherever we turn, we're being pushed to accept it. You've got the problem if you don't accept it, is what Abby's saying, you see. You've got the problem, not them. Friend, there was a time whenever people who practice this, it's a behavior problem. It's a behavior problem. Has nothing to do with, with anything else but one's behavior. Now, there was a time whenever people would lose their jobs for this. There was a time whenever people could be arrested for this. It's been against the law, as we pointed out earlier. There was a time whenever the, the population of the United States as a whole did not accept this. And now we're living in a topsy-turvy world that accepts this sin and not only accepts it and tolerates it, but promotes it and says, you must accept it too, and not only must you accept it, you must support it. Friends, these things, we're going to have to deal with. Our children are going to have to deal with, and our grandchildren are going to have to deal with it. When my daughter attended Texas Women's University. She informed me that it was a common practice at that university and that the teachers there saw nothing wrong with it, or many of the teachers. I don't want to generalize too much. We have to understand I speak in generalizations whenever I say the teachers or uh, this or that sometimes. But many of them accept it. The women who's practicing it said, well, there's no men, there's no boys. So this is what we do. Well, friend, there's plenty of young men in this town attending college, and there's some at Texas Women's University. It's not solely women who are there either. It's an excuse. It was an excuse, and I doubt that they even have to justify it anymore like they did then, or feel like they have to justify it. Now, with these things in mind, and realizing that it is being accepted in our society, it's being promoted not only in newspapers and in various places, but being pushed on our school system. That's what this, this uh, transgender bathroom and fluidity of, of sexual gender is all about. We must realize this. God's Word is the authority in all of these things. And that's what we have to go to. So I ask, what did God say about this? What does God have to say? Well, Leviticus 18, verses 22 through 30, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. And I added the word an. It's an it is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Verse 24, defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in, all of these, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. That's one of the sins of the Canaanites, the Amorites, the people of Canaan. I cast them out, and this is one of the things that caused me to cast them out. Homosexual practices, bestiality. Notice they're listed right there together. One's about as good as the other. We, go, we could complete this. I'm not going to accept to say this. Verse 30 says, Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which are committed before you, and that ye defile not yourself therein. I am the Lord your God. It speaks of the land being defiled because of it. Friends, where this is accepted, where this is prominent, it defiles the land. What does it do? It infiltrates the people. And it's dangerous. And the people come to accept it and they come to practice it. It is called an abomination. In other words, it makes God sick to his stomach, if you'll allow me to use that phraseology. 
That's how disgusting it is in God's eyes that he would call it that. The nations were vomited out because of this sin. At one time, America recognized that this was wrong and that homosexuality would weaken the nation. Wikipedia.org states, in four landmark rulings between the years of 1996 and 2015, the Supreme Court invalidated state laws banning protected class recognition based upon homosexuality. They struck down sodomy laws nationwide, struck down Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, and made same-sex marriage legal nationwide. Now, we've got the opportunity to have two conservative judges put into the Supreme Court, possibly two, one definitely, and another one will possibly. It's, it's up for grabs, maybe. If this happens, we have the opportunity to put in two conservatives who disagree with this. It amazes me how those of one party will question those who are judged. Are you against homosexuality? Are you against, are you against abortion? And say, we, we're not going to approve of them because they're against those things. Well, friends, if you're for them, I wouldn't approve of them. They're looking at it wrong. And the problem is the conservative party sometimes don't see it and they're split on these things in too many cases. Wikipedia makes it clear this nation has changed in its attitude and in its laws. Now we can be sure that the Supreme Court justices who passed this ruling are far from supreme and will face the greatest judge in the highest court at the end of time. I have no doubt that these Supreme Court justices who passed these laws and changed our moral code in America, or aided in changing our moral code in America, will receive just recompense of reward for their part in adding to the moral corruption found in our nation today. Well, what does God say again? Going back to Leviticus. Chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be utterly put to death. Death was the penalty under the Old Testament. Why? Because they did, God did not want this to spread among the people. It was an abomination which was one that would spread. We see it spreading in the United States. We see it being accepted by people in the United States. We even see, and I believe their parents are training them that way, little kids saying, I'm, little girls saying, I'm a boy, little boys saying, I'm a girl. Where did they get that idea? They had to get it someplace. They didn't get it from themselves. They got it from somebody, and I believe in some cases it's their parents corrupting them. Friends, we see the changes that are taking place. We see the warnings in God's word. Even those approving of such conduct, we read, are worthy of death. Listen to Romans 1, verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They take pleasure in these sins going on. You know, it's kind of like whenever somebody rejoices or enjoys seeing uh, one, one individual beaten up by half a dozen. We've all seen these things on TV where it's been videotaped in a school or someplace where half a dozen kids jump on one. Boy, that's brave, isn't it? That's courage, isn't it? Take six of you to whoop that one. I'd say that's pretty weak. I know there's strength in numbers and there's a place to use numbers, but that's ludicrous some of the things we're seeing in the rejoicing. I remember several years ago there's a parade. I believe it was in Dallas. I don't think it was in Fort Worth. Is it one of those two? And this is being filmed from above, high building. And there's a couple of girls there and there's a bunch of other girls. And those other girls had surrounded this one girl. A whole bunch of them surrounded her. And they were pushing her, trying to push her to get her to fight back. One of them was out in the center, the other surrounding. Another girl stepped out and she said, you leave her alone. And she pushed that one girl. 
someone came in from behind, hit her over the head, knocked her down, then kicked her while the others laughed. Thought it was hilarious. And then they went back to the first one. Friend, we understand that there are those who take pleasure in the pain and the suffering and the sins of others. Some big wig in business gets steals from the company and gets by with it. And there's those who rejoice and tell how smart he is. Somebody cheats somebody by selling them something that's not worth as much as they sold it for and deliberately being crooked in the matter. And people re will rejoice, saying, boy, he's a smart businessman. Friends, these things are corrupting influences in our country and those who rejoice in homosexuality and those who practice it are just as guilty as those who are practicing it. Under the Old Testament law, death was the result. Let's do Romans 1. No, I'm sorry. Romans 1, verses 18 through 32. I know this is a rather long reading, but I believe it's important. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Isn't that the case today? Isn't that what we're seeing? They, they're exalting that which is evil and mocking and degrading that which is right because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse now this is talking about the falling away of the Gentiles now verse 21 because that when they knew God the Gentiles knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was dark this is the falling away of the Gentiles verse 22 professing themselves to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man to birds four-footed beasts and creeping things idol worship verse 24 wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie worshiped and served the creature more than the creator again going back to idol worship who is blessed forever amen for this cause God gave them up into vile affections vile affections filthy affections for even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise men leaving the natural use of the woman. In other words, both men and women were doing the same thing because of the word likewise. Leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseen and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was made. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Homosexuals say that, that Christianity and the Bible is, is destructive. It's harmful to, to, to uh, the United States and to people. And so they don't want to retain God in their knowledge because they want to do what they want to do. God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a mind that failed the test, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents and without understanding, covenant breakers, natural, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are what? Worthy of what? Death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now I've never made a secret that I wasn't always a Christian. One time me and some young guys about my age stopped. We had obtained some beer. We stopped at a nightclub. I believe I was the one who went to the door. I'm sure I was. I remember now. I went to the door of that nightclub. And I opened the door. And I asked for a can opener because we failed to have a can opener with us. At that time, we called him a church key. How blasphemous could that be? As for one, and one of the men in there, he was from my hometown and he recognized me. You know what he said? He didn't rebuke me. He didn't even say, Phil, you shouldn't be doing that. Do you know what he said? He started, said, we start them young in. And then he mentioned the town. 
is proud of it. They not only do those things, but what? They have pleasure in them that do them. That's exactly the way this man felt who was in that club that night. Friend, there's no pleasure in these things, and they are certainly things that degrade, humiliate, and destroy, and they're against the will of God, and homosexuality is listed among these things. It destroys. If we don't understand anything else, we need to understand, number one, that it's against God's will. Number two, that it destroys. If everyone in the world became homosexual tomorrow, it would wipe out the planet in one generation faster than any disease known to man. Why? Because it's against nature. It's unnatural. Romans 1, 26, For this cause God gave them up into vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It's against nature. It's not the right, it's not even a natural thing. It's unnatural. It's against the command to be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 9, verse 1, He told Noah and his sons, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. It destroys the home as God would have it. Genesis 2, 21 through 24, God made Adam and then he took the rib from Adam and he made Eve. And, he, and we read in verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. What did he make? He made one man and he made one woman for that one man. He didn't make, what's the old joke that goes way back, I think even to the 60s, maybe before that. He didn't make Adam and Steve, he made Adam and Eve, didn't he? Sure did. He, didn't ever, he never intended for a man to have any kind of intercourse with man, any kind of sexual intercourse with man, or woman, women to have any kind of sexual intercourse with women. Matthew 19, verse 4, Jesus said, He which made them at the beginning made them male and female. I don't know how much clearer the Bible could be than that, do you? Clear that God wanted a man to marry a woman and a woman to marry a man. But today, what do we see? Homosexual couples. And what are they doing? They're adopting innocent babies. Will these children ever understand what a true marriage and home is? It's difficult for me in my wildest imagination to even think of a judge or a child services turning a little baby over to a homosexual couple. Women having babies for homosexual couples is also prevalent today. It's certain that homosexual couples cannot produce babies themselves, which is further evidence that their behavior is against nature. There's violence associated with homosexuality. In jails and prisons, homosexuality is practiced and even forced upon people. It's a real danger in the jails where it's said that they make men into boys. Is it any surprise such violent men and criminals find their release in homosexual behavior? God has revealed it to be so. Where there is a majority of homosexuals, you find extreme and lewd violence. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah whenever the angels came there? Remember the men of the city, they gathered around the house and said, bring them out that we may know them. What does it mean whenever it says that we may know them? Well, we're going to discuss that in a little bit. That doesn't mean they would not sit down and have coffee with them. Not at all. Jude 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, called fornication here because fornication is a general term, and going about after strange flesh. What strange flesh? That's men going after men or women going after women are set forth for an example. They're an example to us today. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And people are blinding themselves to that example. The Levite, who retrieved his concubine from his father-in-law as he was returning home with her. In Judges 19, verses 11 through 28, and the people gathered around the home where he was staying and said, send him out that we may know him. Again, that term, that we may know him. They didn't mean that they wanted to have supper with him or sit down and visit with him. 
They wanted to have sexual relationships with him. They wanted to have sex with this man. Wound up, sent his concubine out. Now, I don't understand that. Don't ask me to explain. It was a different world, a different society, different attitudes. I realize that. Still don't understand it, but I realize it, okay? So she went out, and they abused her all night long to the point to where she died. Started a war. Benjamin was nearly wiped out as a result of that, weren't they? But the sin of those people brought Benjamin down to almost nothing. And let me tell you something, in my opinion, see, they defended it. They wouldn't turn these people over to the other tribes to be punished. They defended those sodomites. They defended those homosexuals. And many of them died for it, too, in the battle that came to pass. I fear, what am I trying to say? I pointed those out to show that these are violent people when they're in the majority. They're not the passive people that we believe them to be many times. Where these people are in the majority, they can be very, very violent and very hateful. I fear for my children and my children's children as to what a violent place this will be if America continues. Well, the question comes up there, what can we do as Christians? Number one, we need to study God's word about the matter. There's much more than what I, I've said here this morning, dealing with homosexuality in God's word. We need to study God's word, learn what God's word has to say. Number two, we need to pray. Pray to the Lord that we have our eyes opened in this nation, that the right people are appointed as leaders in this nation, in, in places of authority, in places of judgment in this nation, that this country can be turned around by such. We can teach others the truth and stand for the truth. Friend, if I know that my congressman supports homosexuality in any way, or if he's a moderate toward it, I'm going to vote against him. I'm not going to vote for a man who supports these laws. I despise such men. I don't care if they're from my party or someone else's party. I'm voting against them. I don't want them in office. I want people who stand for the morality that's found in the Bible and at least most of the morality that America understood to be right at one time. A homosexual can be saved if they repent and serve the Lord. That's why we need to teach the truth. We need to let our representatives know where we stand and vote against those who support so-called gay rights. What an abuse of the word gay and gay marriages. We need to refuse to watch or read or support in any way TV shows, movies, or literature that whitewashes homosexuality. We need to be aware of those who support and promote this sin. Now, I don't know some of the current people who do. I do know that Ellen DeGeneres, or as I like to say, Ellen DeGenerate, uh, supports and promotes this. Friend, I cut, <laughs> I, I don't even like to watch a commercial with her on it. And I guarantee you, if, some, if somebody has her for a sponsor, I'm not going knowingly buy from that place or from that, business, from that, that place. Now, you have your own decisions to make on that. But that's my feelings about it. I remember, I believe it was Anita Bryant, back a long time ago, when was that, the 60s or the 70s? In the 60s. Was it in the 70s? Okay, I've got two different answers on that, 60s or 70s. <laughs> but she was, she was Miss America. She was the spokesperson for Florida orange juice. And you remember she said she came out against homosexuality and she lost her job. Friends, I'd be just as much for somebody who speaks out against God losing their job. If you can speak out against one, why can't we speak out against the other? It doesn't make sense. If you can say homosexuality is okay on public TV and in the newsprint, why can't I say it's not okay? 
See, this is a one-sided argument, and they're using the leverage of the court to silence our voices. Freedom of speech doesn't mean being able to say foul language. Never did, and America recognized that up until fairly recent years whenever they changed the laws in the FCC, Federal Communication Commission. It was never intended to allow people to publicly use trash, gutter language. But it's being twisted today to silence us who would speak out against them and being used to promote those who speak out for these sins. Rosie O'Donnell is another one. I don't know how many people I told whenever she came on and I heard her the first time that that woman is just as liberal as she can be and you don't need to be listening to her. People didn't believe me. She finally came out, didn't she? And everybody knows where she stands on homosexuality now. Friend, I never did watch her. I never did pay attention to her. And I didn't want anybody who's part of mine or my friends or the Lord's congregation watching her. Now again, I'm not going to come into your home and turn off the TV if you're watching her. That's not my place. But this is something I feel that we need to be aware of. We support these people sometimes when we do that. We need to be careful. Those who come out and financially support homosexuality, one of the biggest is Target. I won't hurt, I won't, Janet and I won't go to a Target unless we can't find it someplace else. If I can find it any place else, I'll buy it there. Home Depot is another one. You go to the rainbow page on the web, you'll see those who support these things. Home Depot, I go to Lowe's every time or I go to, it's not Ace anymore. Can't remember the name of it, but I go to the place that used to be Ace Hardware or I'll go to Lowe's. If I just can't find it any place else, I'll go to I'll go to Home Depot because I don't have a choice. The Bible does say, you know, you might have to go out you'd have to go out of the world to avoid these things. But as long as I have the free will and I know, I'm going to do my best to avoid them. Well someone said, Well what about Apple? What about Microsoft? Well, they give us our operating system for nearly every computer you can get, don't they? Both of them support the homosexual agenda. If I'm going to have a computer and use something else I, and use my Bible programs, I'd nearly have to go out of this world. Did you know that? It was, Tim Cook's a big supporter of it. Many others. I can't go into all of them. Not my place time here. Sometimes it's impossible not to trade with a business that doesn't support this sin. And we have to realize that too. So if I see Rick going to Home Depot, I don't have the right to say Rick sinned because he went into Home Depot and bought something. Do I? Don't believe I do. Because I have confidence that Rick will do the right thing. If I see you going in, I don't have that right. This is something you're going to have to consider, think about, and make your own decisions on. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 10 is a verse I've referred to several times. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, fornication's a broad term, it would cover homosexuality, or with the covetous, or with extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. We have to understand that too, don't we? Well, the acceptance of homosexuality in this nation by so many in high places is bad enough. But the ruling allowing the same-sex marriage in the United States on tomorrow's anniversary date, made in 2015, was a new low in America's history. The morality of this nation isn't just slipping anymore. It was slipping for a long time. But with that, it began rushing headlong toward destruction. How many generations until the Lord's church is infiltrated with this doctrine of the devil? I remember Brother W.R. Craig, I believe it was W.R. Craig, used to picture it this way. If I had a blackboard, I'd try to draw a circle, but you wouldn't be able to tell it was a circle. Draw an outer circle, say, okay, that's the world out here. Draw an inner circle and label this denominationalism. And then draw a third circle on the inside, label that the Lord's church. 
friends, what happens is the attitudes of the world first infiltrate denominationalism. We see denominationalism changing and the rules changing. They accepted homosexuality a long time before anyone in the Lord's church ever even thought about it. Then where does it go from denominationalism, from the world to denominationalism, and then gradually it infiltrates the church too often. Not every time. Congregations resist it. Many congregations stay true. But quite often that's the way it goes. We want to be like, as Israel did, the nations round about us. So we want to be like the denominations round about us. I don't know how many t preachers I've heard say, especially starting about 1969 through 70s and 80s, we're going to have to change if we're going to grow. We're going to have to change if we're not going to die. That's just not the case. We'll die if we do change from being God's people. We'll die if we quit being the church that's found in the New Testament. We'll die if we begin to accept the morality of the world round about us. If one believes the Bible, one cannot follow the trends of the world, especially concerning homosexuality. Homosexuality is a sin that's made clear in the New Testament and the Old Testament. One that brought, has brought down nations. And homosexuality destroys individuals. It destroys families. It destroys nations. It destroys congregations. And the worst thing is, it destroys souls. You lose your soul whenever you practice this, brethren. Let us not give up the fight for God's truth. Let us stand against homosexuality, regardless of the violence and hatred that the world may pour upon us. The Lessingers, I thought it fitting that this infamous anniversary be acknowledged and something said about this sin that's been foisted upon America. With that in mind, we realize that there's a saving grace, and that's Jesus Christ. He built his church for those who would be saved. He built his church for those who were, who were on the road to heaven. You have to walk that road, and in walking that road, you must be in his church. Otherwise, you can't. Well, what do you have to do? First of all, you have to hear. John 6, verse 45, is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. They shall all be taught of God. That's what we do. We teach the word of God so that we, people will know how to come to the Lord. You must believe. Mark 16, 15 and 16, Jesus said unto his apostles, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Don't select certain ones. Homosexuals need to hear it. The adulterers need to hear it. The fornicators need to hear it. Everyone needs to hear it, regardless of what they might be doing or what they might be. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, Jesus said. But he that believeth not shall be damned. What do you need to do if you're going to be saved? Believe and be baptized. What do you need to do if you, want, if you decide to be lost? Well, just don't believe. It's that simple. You must repent. Acts 20, verse 21. Paul said, testifying both to the Jews, to the Greeks also, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he preach? He preached repentance. You must change. If you're a homosexual, you cannot keep on practicing homosexuality. You cannot keep on doing that sin. If I'm a drunk, I can't keep on practicing that sin. If I'm a thief, I have to quit stealing. Some places, some cases I have to restore whatever I've done in my sin. Now there's some things I can. If I kill somebody in my sin, if I commit murder, I can't restore that life, can I? But when, when possible, I need to do everything I can to make my sin right. If that involves restoring money, it means restoring money. If that involves doing something else, it involves doing something else. Confess. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, verses 36 through 37, they came upon a certain water. The Ethiopian eunuch asked, What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, Jesus had said that you're to baptize believers. So the natural question comes up, and Philip asked it in verse 37, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. 
And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He affirmed his faith publicly before Philip. He did not deny the Lord. People need to confess Jesus Christ before they're baptized. Make an affirmation of their faith. Then you need to be baptized. Ephesians 5, verse 26. By the way, you see the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized. He's baptized in water. Now let's look at Ephesians 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Speak of the church. It is the church. Cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. When one obeys the word and is washed in the waters of baptism, their sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's that simple. That's how he sanctified the church. That's how he said, what is the church? It's the people. And they're sanctified <coughs> by the word of God. They're sanctified when they're baptized in water because that's where they contact the blood which washes away sins. 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21. We read of the time of Noah when some were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, when few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure, that was a figure of the present, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Didn't say that baptism saved them, did it? It said it had to do with the water. The water saved them by lifting them up above the destruction below. We must be baptized in water, and when we're baptized in water, we're saved from our past sins because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and because that's where we contact the blood of Jesus Christ, which washes away our sins. The like figure runs to even baptism doth also now save us. Now, you can try to dig under that. You can try to climb over that. You can try to get around that, but you can't do it because it says, doth also now save us. What doth also now save us? Us. baptism and yet preacher after preacher will stand in pulpits proclaiming we don't have to be baptized in order to be saved how can they deny such a plain passage of scripture let me continue with that now it's not the putting away the filth of the flesh in other words it's not a common bath but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ without his resurrection it wouldn't have been possible would it but through his resurrection, we receive forgiveness. And then we must live faithful, Colossians 1, 22 through 23, in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Oh, that's how I want to be presented in the judgment, don't you? Blameless, unreprovable, holy. Then verse 23 continues that. If... There's only one way we can be presented this way in God's sight. And that's if ye continue in the faith, grounded in sail, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. You have to continue. You have to keep on keeping on. You can't be moved away because even though you've been baptized and your past sins washed away, if you're moved away from the hope of the gospel, then you're not going to be. You're not going to be holy. You're not going to be unblameable. You're not going to be unreprovable. You have to continue. You have to keep on keeping on. From the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, he said. Friend, if you're subject to the invitation of Christ, you can have your sins washed away. Won't you come? Won't you obey him in these things? Won't you do so while we stand and while we sit?